This time around, I've basically prepared everything already, all the chopping and cutting's done. So I've basically made a double lot. So 800 grams of mince, which I've then doubled, three eggs, which I've doubled, one capsicum, I've doubled, one onion, doubled, plus basically put what the ingredients are at the bottom. Uh, I've mixed the oil and herbs and uh, Worcestershire sauce all together. I've gone with rice bran oil because it's got a very high smoke rate. Uh, it generally means it won't turn as badly. Apparently it's actually reasonably good for you amongst the good oils uh, from what I've read. Uh, tomato paste, chili, garlic, Worcestershire sauce. So basically I've mixed all of that together already just to keep it nice and easy. All right, so basically to keep it nice and simple here, mix up the eggs and break them up nicely. And realistically, we just mix it all together. Get your hands in there, get all nice and messy. Pull that in. And here comes Ajax again. He's just discovered there's food. So, no, no, leave it alone. Feral. Okay, so I'll just start mixing this in together because obviously getting it all mixed in with the meat is probably the harder part. But once you've basically got your mince separate, but once you get the eggs mixed in, getting the rest of it's going to be a lot easier. And if you have a pet, I'd uh, probably say keep it under control while you're doing it, otherwise you might miss out on half your food. Fortunately, birds don't eat much. Um, so get that all mixed in really well. The trick after this is going to be separating it out. So originally when I first started making this, I basically got myself like a bread tin, uh, lined that, um, or when I'm doing double lots like this, two bread tins. Um, then I used to chop it up and try and basically make nice even amounts. What I actually found seems to work nicer for me came across these really nice small bread tins, uh, which I can basically do all of the figuring out the portions before cooking it. And then each one is basically a perfectly sized, perfectly shaped serving. Um, example. Uh, the trick with that though, to make it as easy as possible is to get as many as per servings as you can go. And that way you basically just measure them, weigh them up and everything, make it nice and simple for yourself. Um, I'm very poor at estimating it, so I have to use scales. Uh, anybody who has a lot more forethought than myself, uh, potentially if you actually weigh the entire mixture first, you can do it that way, but pretty well guarantee, even though I'm recording this and saying it, I won't actually be doing it. Mixing the onion in now. I'll mix all the herbs in there with it. Tomato paste. I actually did it without the oil once because uh, I figured, hey, it's going to be better off without the oil. And uh, it actually turned out extremely dry. So probably wouldn't recommend that uh, unless you know another way to keep it moist. That's why I basically searched around to try and find an oil that was less bad because then it'll actually bad for you. So, olive oil is all the rage these days. And we've read apparently the rice bran is supposed to be right there with it, complement each other quite well from what I've read less flavour in it, so if you don't want to actually put get that strong flavour that you get out of olive oil into it, and the rice grain is a very good one for that, it's quite neutral. Okay, get all that in 
one there. And here he comes for another taste. Being helpful or hindrance? Yeah? See when you're cracking eggs. I'll have to show you that one there. Bizarre reactions now. That's why cat videos are so popular. Get it all mixed in as evenly and as well as you possibly can. So ultimately that's going to be the, the big thing. The consistency. Get out of it. You're a feral. Yes you are. You good boy? You good boy? You want to talk? No? Too busy trying to feed your face? Okay, so got a nice consistency here now, all nicely mixed together. Everything's all mixed in quite well. So the next trick there is now to evenly spread that amongst the portions. Uh, that's the way I do it. Uh, Obviously, you can go back to the more traditional method and actually cook it as a singular loaf and cut it. Um, I just find it simpler to do ahead of time. So if you can find smaller baking containers, it's excellent. Uh, I do that for quite a few of my recipes that I work with now. Uh, it's just nice to basically just take it straight out of the oven and know that you can either serve it or you know, pack it, put it in the freezer without having to basically get all of the portion control exactly right. All right, um, come back with the divvied out items. Yeah. All right, I've divvied it all up nice and evenly, packed it down so it's reasonably flat. Uh, Next step, I've already mixed up the sauce that goes on top. So basically that's a mixture of Worcestershire sauce, tomato paste, and it's supposed to be shallots, but I ran out, so I went with spinning yeah, onions instead. So basically, you just spread a bit of that over the top of each one. You wanna get a reasonable covering over each. That's the trickiest part, of course, because when I've already pre-divvied it like this, I've got a larger area to cover, so it makes me more likely to run out. So I'll just put a spin on each one to start. And go from there. I've got the ovens already preheated, ready to go. And basically once I've got this part done, let's go in the oven. 180 degrees Celsius and that'll be about 50 to 60 minutes just keep an eye on it see how it goes I found putting in the small containers it can cook a little bit quicker it's usually pretty close to that though so I generally put it on for say about 40 check it put it on for a bit longer and So far, what I've found in these smaller containers, I believe it's because they're nice and new and fresh. But if you've got yourself a good, clean, semi non stick container, it doesn't seem to require much in the way of degreasing non stick stuff put on there. Uh, it because all of the oils and everything come out of the meat life and it shrinks as well, so it pretty much removes itself from the edges anyway. So I've found that to be the case with it so far. And hopefully that doesn't change on me, otherwise I'm going to have a heck of a time getting them out. So experiment yourself, see how adventurous you are, but you'll probably find that unless you've got like particularly old containers, 
um, it will probably not really stick anyway. I mean, my bread, tin, bread tins are dead, so that's why I use the paper. But on these, you know, they're perfectly fine. These are practically new as well, so. Okay, decent coverage over each of them. It's really there for just that little extra flavour anyway. Alright, now I'm going to change the camera angle so that you can see me putting it into the oven, which is like going to be super exciting. Yeah. Okay, so depending on how you do them, obviously so that will depend on how you actually wind up putting them in your oven. It's probably one of the more awkward ones you could go with. And it's probably one of the downsides to having them in multiple little containers like this. Okay, so set a timer for about 40 odd minutes, have a look, see how it's going. It should take about another 10 to 15 minutes after that, but it's better to be safe than sorry and every oven reacts differently. So give it a go, see how you go with that if you do actually like the look of the recipe. Uh, I find it quite delicious, um, even my son likes it, so it's going to have something going for it. Um, show you the end product. And here's the finished product. Just empty out of containers, put into whatever container that you like for freezing or refrigerating till later or serve as is. Thank you very much for watching.